Hi, I'm Starbuck and I'm an early years and key stage one teacher from England in the UK. I also have a degree in music and have specialised in teaching across the primary age range. In this video series, I'll be sharing lots of ideas and tips about teaching music to young children. In this episode, I'll be talking about basic music vocabulary that you can introduce to children. So if you're new to music or you want to brush up on your skills, put your feet up, get a cup of tea and welcome to 5 Minutes of Music. Pulse, or beat, is basically the continuous repeating units of time. When you tap along to a song or clap, usually this is the beat. It's important for children to learn to feel the beat, as this is a key point in keeping in time. To help teach this, I encourage you to start the beat before you start singing a song. Get all the children tapping, or clapping, or clicking their fingers, or nodding their head, and then once everyone is together, I will count in four beats and then begin singing. The majority of songs will either have three beats or four beats. So for example, twinkle twinkle. One, two, three, four. Twinkle twinkle, little star. Tapping the beat can be moved onto instruments such as a drum. I would encourage a model left and right movements with two drumsticks or marching on the spot left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One of the main misconceptions children do when tapping the beat is to tap the rhythm of the song instead. So here's an example of me tapping the beat. One, two, Three. Miss Polly had a dolly who was sick, sick, sick. And here's me tapping the rhythm of the melody, which is incorrect. Miss Polly had a dolly who was sick, sick, sick. Tempo is basically the speed of the music. Here's a metronome. You can also use a digital one on Google. It says here 100 beats per minute. That means 100 beats will happen in a minute. If we want a faster beat, we would change the tempo to a higher amount of beats. So for example, 60 beats per minute is one beat every second. 120 beats per minute is twice as fast as two beats per minute. Here are a few Italian words you can use to describe music. Largo, this is slow, around 40 to 60 beats per minute. Moderato is around 108 to 120 beats per minute. Allegro is fast, around 120 to 168 beats per minute. I like to use a song linked to the Hare and the Tortoise story. It's a good song to talk about the different tempos because it has two different speeds for the characters, a slow tortoise and a fast hare. Also, in a piece of music, the tempo can change speed. If it goes fast, we can call it an accelerando, which is similar to accelerate. And if it starts to get slower, we call this a rallentando. To teach an accelerando, I would sing the song head, shoulders, knees and toes and tell the children that we are going to start to speed up the tempo. From my experience, the children love learning the Italian words when learning music. Rhythm. I talked earlier about one of the main misconceptions with children is that they mix up the rhythm and the beat. The rhythm is a repeating pattern that goes over the beat. To teach this, I would look at repeating patterns in nature, such as the clickety clack of a train track. I would use a song bag and a chant such as I can see a chocolate bar, I can see a chocolate bar. Then I would take something else out of the song bag. I can see a football. I can see a football. This next musical element, pronounced timbre, is the tone colour of music. If you imagine that a piece of music is a painting, the different instruments would be the different colours in the picture, and the choice of different colours can affect the picture. As an artist or composer, the choice of colour is a main tool that is used to create a desired effect. Different instruments playing the same melody, for example, sound very different. Here are some examples of playing the same melody on different instruments so you can hear the difference in tone colour or timbre. So for example with the piano this would be tinkly, mellow, feathery and bright. The 
The next instrument is a pocket trumpet. This one could be described as brassy, bright and full. I would describe the tone colour of a glockenspiel as bright, silvery, metallic. Talk to the children about timbre when exploring the instruments. It's a great opportunity for children to learn new descriptive vocabulary and in their exploration they will start to notice differences between instruments. Just like we teach children to select the appropriate colour when painting a picture rather than just picking a random crayon, the same is for composing. I like to give the children picture prompts for selecting instruments. What instrument they choose for a haunted house? What instrument sounds like a bird? What instrument would be good for rainfall? What instrument sounds like a giant walking? If you want to revise on all the most common instruments found in schools and nurseries, watch my other video where I talk about and explore instruments of the classroom. Dynamics are basically the volume of the music. Some terminology I would use with children would be piano for soft, forte for loud, Crescendo, that means the music's getting louder. Diminuendo, that means the music's starting to get quieter. An interesting fact about the piano is before it was invented, the most popular keyboard instrument was a harpsichord. And to make the sound, you would press the keys and it would pluck the string. This means that you have very limited control over the volume. The invention of the piano was groundbreaking because the notes are made by pressing the key and a hammer hitting the string. This means that you can play a variety of different dynamics from piano to forte, which is why the full name of a piano is called a pianoforte. When teaching dynamics, I like to make links to different animals. How would we make the sound of a mouse, piano or forte? The sound of an elephant? Would this be the same or different? To talk about sound changing in volume within a piece of music for example, like a crescendo, I would talk about a volcano erupting, give the children a mixture of different instruments and get everyone to start very quietly and gradually get louder. Instruments can be categorised into tuned or untuned instruments. Tuned instruments can change their pitch or have lots of different notes. On a basic level, sound can be high or low. I like to ask children to listen to different sounds. Birds have a high pitch, dogs have a low pitch bark. Can they sing in a high pitch? Can they sing in a low pitch? I'll also introduce a scale that goes up in pitch to a higher note and then down in pitch gradually to a low note, like a set of steps. Here's an example of a scale that starts with a low note, goes to a high note and then goes back to the low note again. I've made an information sheet to accompany this video you can download from my website for free at www.starbuck.education. Thank you for watching. If you're on YouTube or Facebook and you found this video useful, I'd really appreciate it if you reshared it with your friends as my channel is still new and growing. If you have any questions about this video, please ask in the comments and consider subscribing on YouTube. It's free and I have a lot more videos coming in the future. Thanks. Bye.